Hello everyone, I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, the Caribbean Court of Justice rules in favor of former DBS radio manager Marriott Warrington in her matter against the station. Eliminating stigma, the theme as Dominica joins the rest of the world on Saturday in observance of World AIDS Day and a message of sustained vigilance from the ODM as the 2018 hurricane season comes to an end. The details coming up. Stay connected and share your favorite holiday moments with Flow. Get the Alcatel A1 for $199 when you activate an extra-large prepaid combo plan or the Samsung J4 for just $399 with a large postpaid plan and get free talk evenings and weekends. Plus, get free WhatsApp on large and extra-large prepaid combo plans and sign up for any new service for a chance to win cash or hampers every week. So make it Flow for everything mobile this Christmas. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanize and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanize and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. The Caribbean Court of Justice awards former DBS radio manager Marriott Warrington $52,000 in damages. That sum represents six months' salary plus other benefits. For the last eight years, Marriott Warrington has been fighting DBS radio in court for breach of contract. Following the court's decision on Friday, Warrington told Matt Pelty if they were going to break her contract, they should have done so in accordance with its terms and conditions. Ms. Warrington says DBS Radio should have paid her for the balance of her contract and any other benefits provided for in that contract. Asked why she persevered in the eight-year-long fight, Warrington said she kept on fighting because she knew she was right. In addition to damages, the CCJ has also awarded Warrington costs totaling $37,000. The CCJ also prescribed costs in the High Court and Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal. Interest was also awarded on damages at the rate of 5% per annum from the date of the judgment in the High Court until payments are made to Ms. Warrington. Marriott Warrington was represented by attorney Cara Schillingford and David Bruni. Eliminating the stigma attached to HIV and AIDS. That's, the, that's Dominica's focus for World AIDS Day on Saturday. World AIDS Day is recognized on 1st December every year with the aim of bringing awareness and sensitization to those living with the disease. Interim Coordinator of the National HIV AIDS Response Program, Lester Guy, says numerous testings have been held around the island leading up to World AIDS Day. The big event, though, will be something separate and apart from testing. It's basically the pinnacle of most of the activities that we have. It is a precursor to the coming weeks and we are going to have this really interesting walk. Our walk would be from Point Michel to the Bayfront and also it would be from Kinfield at the Old Mill building to the Bayfront also. But with the, with the walk from the West Coast, we are also going to have um, cyclists, the competitive cyclists from riding from Jimmy to Maho and also a few of the young athletes from grammar school and um, go to secondary school. Well, they're also going to run from Marwo to Kinfield, where together all of us will do the casual walk. So if you're a bicycle enthusiast, sorry, if you're a bi bicycle enthusiast, if you are uh, somebody who just want to be an advocate, an activist for HIV and AIDS, and strengthening the fact that in Dominica we need to move away from stigma and discrimination, we're asking you to join us. Guy says the walk will reach a large cross-section of Dominicans, which will bring awareness of the HIV-AIDS situation in the country to a greater number of people. He says eliminating the stigma attached to HIV-AIDS is among the top goals for the National HIV-AIDS Response Program. In Dominica, our aim right now, one of the key aims or objective of the NAPS is to eliminate stigma and discrimination in Dominica as it relates to persons who are living or affected or infected with HIV. 
Why? Because this is one of the greatest challenges that we have right now. Persons are um, struggling, or it has become quite challenging for persons to enroll in care because they are afraid that persons will snicker at them or make comments or spread the word that they have seen them in a, at a clinic or at a specific health center where they know people may be getting care for, for the disease. So really, I, as I said to most of our, of our radio stations, what we are trying to do right now for Dominica to be the spearheaded island in the region that's going to eliminate stigma and discrimination. The theme for World AIDS Day 2018 is Know Your Status. An invitation to the people of the Mont Prosper area to work collaboratively with government for the well-being of the community. Prime Minister Skerritt made the appeal at a contract signing ceremony for drainage works in that community this week. Contracts worth $23 million have already been signed for ongoing road projects in the Roseau Valley. The contracts will be signed here, which is part of a bigger project. First, we have to do the drains. So the first phase of this road reconstruction program inside Mount Prosper is to do the drains. And we're using two contractors from Mount Prosper, and we hope that they will use local labor from Mount Prosper. So every single dollar that we spend in will remain here in Mount Prosper to benefit the residents of Mount Prosper. It takes serious, sincere, committed people to join in and to work, to work for the welfare of this country. If you sow unity and working together, you will reap the bounty that will come by that. Yes. If you say you, if you say you don't want government money, you don't want government this, then you are going to the ones who are going to suffer from it and your children. Yes. So, we are prepared to embrace, we are prepared to hold hands, we are prepared to work with anybody who is genuinely and sincerely concerned about the welfare of themselves and their fellow men. But I give you the assurance and a public commitment that once we get these drains completed, we will start the first phase immediately, which is the surfacing of the road with a six-inch concrete base. And if properly done, with a good mix, you'll have a road for a very long time to come. And those, that, road, that, this, that road will also be lit with the solar lights you see that we are putting along the highway of Dominic. As a matter of fact, we will start the placement of these solar lights while the drains are being constructed. So by the time we complete the drains and the roadworks, the lights will already be in place to enhance the quality of life and the safety of the residents of Mount Prosper. The Dominican public is being advised to remain vigilant even as the 2018 hurricane season officially comes to an end on the 30th of November. National Disaster Coordinator of the Office of Disaster Management, Fitzroy Pascal, made the remarks as the region marks the close of the hurricane season. For many, the end of the hurricane season may signal a time to breathe a sigh of relief. However, as we have experienced several times and quite recently in the month of November, trough systems can create significant impact across the island, both in and outside the official season. As such, the ODM reminds the public to focus on hazards that affect the country, and in particular, your community. The ODM is using this opportunity to introduce to the public the Weather Alert app developed specifically for Dominica. This app provides alert for all impending hazards for Dominica and is another step towards making information readily available to residents. Dominica was put under warnings but spared the impact of Tropical Storm Beryl in July and Tropical Storms Isaac and Kirk in September. Pascal says these experiences allowed the country to test its preparedness. The positive outcome of these close calls was that they provided opportunities to exercise the disaster preparedness and response mechanism of the country. 
This exercising activity is a necessary component in testing and maintaining the alertness and level of readiness of the public and private sectors, as well as the general public. Pascal also encouraged the public to adhere to the building codes as the country develops its resilience following the impact of last year's Hurricane Maria. As the rehabilitation process continues following the devastation by Maria in 2017, all should adhere to proper building codes. This is one way to contribute to building resilience as we move forward. Disaster management requires the input of all to be effective. Therefore, all are advised to take steps to educate and empower themselves to be better able to protect you, your family, and to lend a helping hand to other vulnerable people in your community. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after the break. Get ready to open the best gifts with Flow this Christmas. Sign up for a new broadband or TV service with free installation. Or sign up for a broadband and TV bundle and get 40% off broadband for the first two months. Plus, get a chance to win a 55-inch smart TV, one year or six months of free service. Enjoy big-time entertainment and big speeds this Christmas with Flow. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. L'année 5 tout partout. Attention si vous êtes nom et bien fan. Visitez Place Santé pour examiner le corps. Ça c'est un nid pour vous voir si l'année pièce moun au lion qui ni maladie TB et bien maladie sexuelle. En compagnie de monde qui ni maladie HIV, peni TB aussi. Savez qui? L'année guérison pour TB. Ou ça vivre en bonne santé même si ou ni maladie HIV. Parlez by docteur. Point responsabilité. Aidez du bout de simé maladie TB et HIV. Ou agez tout le monde pour examiner le corps. The Minister for Health concerned that the significant advances being made in the health sector under the current administration are sidelined in the media. This week, the Health Minister forcefully addressed statements in the media that the hospital was out of basic supplies, warning employees to do their jobs. Mr. Darrow pushed back, saying the reports made no sense in light of a $5 million budget to address these matters. We just saw from this $5 million right now cancer treating drugs and, and drugs to treat them. Um, chronic eye treatment of the glaucoma is now free of charge to some of our populace. Skilled staff and physical structures, including the construction of the brand new modern new national hospital. We don't have people talking about this. A 40 million US dollar gift from our friends, the People's Republic of China. A much needed project, given the rapidly deteriorating the existing facility. And yes, it is deteriorating rapidly. It's a four year, it's a four decade old facility. One which has served us well for over four decades. But of course, we all admit whose best days have long begun. Hurricane Maria would have impeded the progress of works. And in fact, wait not for the storm, we would have already seen the completion of phase one of this project. But notwithstanding the setbacks experience, I am pleased to report to the nation that works has recommenced some three weeks ago. And for this, we are thankful. Besides efforts to get hurricane-affected health centers back online, the minister says a lot more is in the pipeline. As the Minister for Health and Social Services, I would like to reassure each and every one of you that with all the work that has begun on the repairs of the health facilities, the commencement or recommencement of works on the new National Hospital, the approval of funds for the construction of the new Marigot Hospital, the plans to build new health facilities in Newtown, Vickers, Penville, Colliho, the training of staff to provide new and improved services, a number of facilities under the SMELL Smart Healthcare Facility, the installation of solar panels and solar nanogrids at a number of our health structures. We have seen solar refrigerators at CMS, central medical stores, and other critical areas. The launch and expansion of the National Health Insurance Program and the many other medical social safety nets that we have embarked on means that our healthcare system is well on its way to developing resilience. A major milestone, that's how the Deputy British High Commissioner to the region has described the new Smart Health Centre in La Plaine. This $1.6 million Smart Health Centre in La Plaine is the first, but there are plans to build another three similar facilities over the next few years. Some visitors say the post-Maria transformation in the country is impressive. I arrived in, in this region as Deputy High Commissioner um, in August last year, about two weeks actually before the hurricanes hit the region. And my first trip out of Barbados was down to Dominica, but not on any uh, nice 
easy trip to meet the ministers or whatever. It was on a British military plane um, coming in for four days to deliver, uh, be at the front end of the humanitarian and relief effort. So for me uh, to come back, I've come back several times since then. I came with uh, His Royal Highness Prince Charles as well when he came to visit the, visit the island. But for me to come back each time and see the developments and the, the growth and the resilience of the people here is really uh, great to see. The initiative in La Plaine adds to a suite of climate resilient projects supported by the UK government. This includes reconstruction of the Lubia to Bagatelle Road. There is also a geothermal power plant being developed at Wharton Waven and the rehabilitation of the island's water system. And it's very important for all of us living in the Caribbean as we know that the likelihood is high, sadly, that, that we will be hit by some sorts of natural, natural disaster. So in the event of an emergency, the ability of health facilities to be able to treat the sick and injured in spite of the effect of the disasters on the region as a whole and in the country is absolutely critical. And we've seen actually a recent exam example of the tangible ben benefits of smart and smart hospitals um, as a result of Hurricane Irma last year, where uh, the Peebles Hospital in the British Virgin Islands um, actually became the hub for all of government emergency operations after their building was damaged. Um, and this highlights the, the, you know, the, imp the, for the importance and the value of ensuring that we make a concerted de effort to address the vulnerability. So the British Virgin Islands, while not a direct beneficiary of this program, has actually been following the Smart Health Facility program very closely. And they're using the tools that we've developed under this project for their own planning and are now looking to extend the concept into other public buildings such as schools. So it just goes to show the value of this project and how it can be developed and, and brought into other areas. Dominica's Meteorological Office has vowed to keep educating the public on the terminology and imagery used in the weather reports. This is an effort to help the public better understand and respond to information being given in the reports. There have been concerns that people do not fully understand the terms used in reports, but Acting Senior Meteorological Officer Marshall Alexander says the department will continue its education drive so that the public is better informed. We will continue in our efforts at educating the public on weather-related terms and the dynamics of weather and the atmosphere. Visit our website at weather.gov.dm where information is available on weather systems and common forecast terms used in the daily and severe weather forecast on our resource page. Additionally, persons can also get acquainted with the color coding system on our extended forecast page. The vigilance is comprised of four colors, with green representing days with no threat of weather or severe weather. Yellow represents a low chance of significant weather activity, and the public should be aware of the weather situation. Amber is a medium threat level and requires the public to be prepared as there is a likely threat of severe weather. And red, which is the highest level of warning, represents a greater degree of certainty of severe weather impact. The first prediction for the 2018 hurricane season was for a 35% chance of above normal, 40% near normal and 25% below normal, with 10 to 16 named storms being forecast, 5 to 9 predicted to become hurricanes and 2 to 4 becoming major hurricanes of category 3 or higher. In the August update prediction, weather and oceanic changes supported a reduction in the level of cyclone activity, therefore the chance of a below normal season was increased to 60 percent, a near normal season 30 percent, and above normal season reduced to 10 percent, with 9 to 13 named storms being predicted, and 4 to 7 becoming hurricanes, and 0 to 2 becoming major hurricanes. By the end of the season, we saw the formation of 15 named storms and one tropical depression. Eight storms become, became hurricanes, and two became major hurricanes. This means that the actual activity was closer to the initial predictions given in May. The 2018 hurricane season was, however, thankfully less eventful for Dominica when compared to the 2017 devastation by Hurricane Maria. Alexander is echoing the call that Dominicans be prepared at all times, even if the season has ended. The public should note that even though the island was threatened by three tropical cyclones, it was a trough system 
enhanced by favorable upper-level support, which produced the most significant rainfall across Dominica during the period from November 4th to 11th, resulting in damages due to flooding, landslides, and rockfalls, mainly across the northern half of Dominica on November 10th. This highlights the need for the public to keep in mind that the focus should always be on being prepared for local hazards to which communities are vulnerable, such as flooding, rough seas, landslides, and rockfalls. The acting senior meteorological officer cautioned Dominicans to obtain weather information from reliable sources. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Imagine. You have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. The Caribbean Court of Justice rules in favor of former DBS radio manager Marriott Warrington in her matter against the station. Eliminating stigma, the theme as Dominica joins the rest of the world on Saturday in observance of World AIDS Day. And a message of sustained vigilance from the ODM as the 2018 hurricane season comes to an end. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Do have a great weekend.